Mr. Bill Poker peeps, welcome to the vlog. I feel much, much better this week. Last week I was having a little struggle mentally, but I'm, I've got it back together. It was fun. Yesterday, Billy and I did our very, very first YouTube live q and I think we had about, I don't know, 30 or 35 people on there, and it was fun. It lasted about 35 minutes. Our internet connection was awful, I guess. Uh, I used my phone, and I think I forgot to connect to Wi-Fi. <laughs> I think I just had it going through AT&T. I'll get better next time. But it was really fun. Thank you guys who joined in. Played my normal Wednesday Poker League. Did well in there, you'll see that. And then uh, at Windstar this weekend, I decided for the second week in a row to play a little four card game. It's so many cards. I played some PLO, so we're gonna go through some of those hands. For you guys who are just Hold'em players, don't be discouraged. Learning new games, whether it's uh, spades or hearts or PLO or whatever it is, helps uh, just with card sense and all that kind of stuff in any game, including Hold'em. So let's get on to the hands from this week. But before we get to those hands this week, we're going to give you the results from last week. If you didn't see last week's video, here's a link to it where I described a hand where I shoved in 120 big blinds with ace-king preflop, and I was asking you guys what you thought of the play, and I told you at the end of it that the guy called me with pocket queens. So, the results really, really don't matter, because it really only matters is what decision did I make, but I hit a king on the flop, and ended up doubling up. Uh, I went to about even, and then, as I said on the video last week, I took a break, uh, went and got a drink, had got something to eat, and I came back, decided to leave, I was tired, and then the game got even crazier, I wish I had stayed. Again, the results, completely irrelevant. And that's why I didn't say anything last week, because the results skew people's uh, idea of what should happen. So, again, results don't matter, it really matters. What was the decision? When I made it? Was it a good one? Was it not a good one? Regardless of what happened. We started with, uh, I believe, 26 players tonight. We are down to the final nine, final table. There they are. Most notably, Stone and Rob, who are the major nemesis. Hi, Ryan too. Ryan's a major nemesis. So is Sam. So is Alex. David's a major nemesis. And pretty much everybody's a major nemesis. All right, Mr. Bill's gonna win it tonight. Here we go. I just won a big hand when I shoved with pocket sevens. Got called by Ace King of Clubs. And the board ran out good for me. And I about doubled up. I went from twenty-nine thousand to fifty-five thousand and knocked the player out. Six players left. We are on the bubble. Uh, we just chopped the last man for 80 bucks a person. Here we go, six people left. Now there are five, Ryan, Alex, Sam, Rob, and myself. Now there are four, Ryan, Alex, Rob, and myself. We just took a little break, there's four of us left. Uh, maybe tonight I will win the tournament, we'll see. I'm gonna be showing you guys some hands from here on in. Now those golf pros are pretty legit. 16. Oh, Good luck, sir. Thank you. I'm all in. 22. I shoved for 22. Alex is thinking. Hey, this is King 10. Oh, he's open ended. Golly. Match the board. Match the board. Golly. Wow. I did it all right. Can't do anything. I, no. I, I, I got it all. I got it all in there with pocket aces. Exactly what I wanted. And lost. Poker might be the worst game that I've ever played in my entire life. 
and all that. Right. So ridiculous. I did exactly what I wanted to do. I got him to call 16. Poker got a decent call. In my mind, I had too many outs. Golly. My reward for coming in fourth, I get Chip, to deal Chip, the final two. Woohoo! <laughs>I went up to Windstar on Friday night. I got on the list for Omaha 125 mix. Uh, one round of high, one round of high low. Uh, one of my best buddies, Rob Jenkins, was playing in the game also. But I played in the game that was open for about 20 minutes beforehand, a 1-3 game. Um, I left that game, I think, up $5. <laughs> So I got called for the PLO list and then I got to, I finished my little one three session and then went over there. So let's get to some hand analysis on some little four card poker. All right, me and Rob just finished a session at Windstar. We actually played Omaha tonight. Uh, this was, how many times have you played in a row, Omaha? Three. Three. I played two times in a row. And I actually I won on both and you have won on two both. out of three. Well, <laughs> you have won two out of two until tonight. But, uh, so what did you think of the session tonight? It was a lot of fun. Uh, a lot of cards, a lot of chips <laughs> moving around, and I was having a great time to get my chips. Yeah, it was a fun game. It was not a crazy game by any stretch of the imagination. I've played way crazier Omaha games. But it was, again, it was a fun game. It was really interesting because Rob teases me a little bit about my V-Pick being 100% in Hold'em. Totally. And, 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 and I'm telling you, he played <laughs> almost every hand tonight. I mean, it was just, it was kind of ridiculous. I told Rob, stop playing hands. Uh, <laughs> it was fun. But, but uh, um, he won a huge pot, which you're going to find out here in the, in the, on my blog here. And I won a pretty good one. I won one that was very, very interesting. You guys are going to, a guy made a huge mistake against me. Let's just say that. So the very first hand that I played that was a relatively big one happened to be against Rob. Uh, it was Omaha high only. I had $450, I was under the gun. I had ace of hearts, 10 of hearts, two of diamonds, 10 of diamonds. It ended up being six players at $5 each. So the flop with 30 in the pot came three, three, 10. I flopped second nuts. And if somebody has pocket threes, then I'm just gonna lose all my money. <laughs> I lead out for $15, uh, Rob calls, and then two other players call. So the turn with 90 in the pot comes the six of diamonds. Again, I lead out this time for $60, Rob makes the call, the other two fold. So with 210 in the pot, the river comes the four of diamonds. I lead out for 130, Rob said he hit one of his cards, he ended up with a straight, and I ended up winning the pot. So I am not an expert at Omaha by any stretch of the imagination. So this next hand was an interesting one for me. It's again, Omaha high. There's a straddle for $10. I'm in middle position one with $730. I was in for 500. I have ace of clubs, queen of clubs, queen of spades, three of diamonds. So it ended up being seven of us at $10. Kind of unusual that there wasn't a raise in there somewhere. So the flop with 70 in the pot comes two of diamonds, four of clubs, five of spades. Again, I flopped the second nuts. The end of the gun makes it $70. He was the straddler. The P1 then pots it for 280. Uh, now this player has me covered. He was relatively tight. It comes to me, what do I do? I ended up making the fold with second nuts. And everybody else folded too. So I have a fellow vlogger, L08 Grinder. Here's a link to his vlog, um, who I sometimes email when I have a question because I don't know Omaha that well. So he gave me his take on this, showed me the numbers of my equity, and it turns out he thinks it was actually a good fold. Okay, the next hand might be another one that might show you that I'm not really 100% confident in Omaha because I really didn't know what to do. So there was a straddler it was a very, very angry young guy. He had just lost a big pot and he made an announcement before this. They said, I don't care what anybody does. I don't care what my cards are. When it comes to me, I am gonna make it a raise. So I happen to be under the gun with two, three, four, five, double suited. Of course, the suits probably don't matter, uh, at least not very much since my cards are so little. At least mine are all connected and suited. There was four limpers. The end of the gun made it 60. The cutoff called. I then decided, okay, I'll play for 60. I call. 
small blind my buddy Rob calls and then the big blind jams for two hundred and seventy dollars ugh all right, the under the gun, he knew he was gonna do it. So he puts all his money in. He has $240. So now it's like $210 to win 700. But really, I know it's gonna be more than that because Rob has already grabbed his chips and I know he's calling. So really it's about 210 to win 900. So I made the call. Oh my gosh, I just played 2345 for $270. Yikes. So as I said, Rob made the call and there are four of us at nearly $270, one guy a little bit shorter. The flop comes king, queen, three, no bueno for me. Rob and I are the only ones that have chips left. Rob shoves all in, uh, of course I fold. Rob had pocket queens and flopped a set of queens. Uh, the board then came nine, nine. So Rob has a full house and he ended up scooping the entire thing. Uh, the big blind had pocket aces so, and then XX, I'm not sure. The under the gun angry guy, who knows what he had. He just slammed his cards down and walked away from the table. Don't be angry people. It's not very, it's not a good look. It's not fun. You're not, you're not gonna win. <laughs> of course, I didn't win either. I put in $270 with two, three, four, five. So actually I asked LO8 Grinder about this hand also. I thought maybe this was just atrocious and he did not say it's atrocious. He didn't say it was great. He said that most times you're gonna fold something like that uh, just because even though you're suited and connected, uh, you're not gonna win very many two pair hands. Uh, you can lose set hands and even your flushes are going to end up being small ones. So your best bet is if you hit a straight on low cards and then no other flushes come. So. Not fantastic. Although he said with the numbers I was getting, it wasn't horrible either. All right, this next one. This is the hand of the night. <laughs> it was very interesting. All right, so we're playing Omaha high low this time. So I have $300 in the big blind. I have ace of spades, ace of clubs, eight of spades, 10 of diamonds. Not fantastic for high low, but hey, the high is pretty good. Anyhow, um, the cutoff makes a 20, small blind calls, and I make the call. So there's three of us to the flop, $60 in the pot, and it comes 10 of spades, nine of spades, five of diamonds. I have the nut flush draw. I'm probably not gonna go anywhere. There's no low yet. So it checks to me. I bet $40 and both players call. The turn with 180 in the pot is the ace of hearts, giving me top set of aces. Still nut flush draw. I like that card. It checks to me. I bet 150. Uh, first guy folds, the next guy shoves all in for 305. Now this player had been playing uh, pretty darn tight, uh, in fact, very, very tight. Uh, but I've got the best hand possible at this moment, so of course I make the call. The river is the seven of spades, giving me the nut high. So I turn over my cards and say, nut flush, I had you beat anyways, I had a set of aces, I was in the lead the whole way. So he tanks, and tanks and stares at his cards and kind of flips them and stuff like that and then mucks them face down. And this was after about a minute of looking at his cards. And the guy next to him says, what are you doing? He doesn't have a low and you have a low. Oh my goodness. He had six, eight, he also had spades and he folded a low. So the pot had over $900 in it and I ended up scooping the whole thing because he made a mistake and folded what would have been half of the pot. Woohoo for me. I did feel bad for the guy. I mean, he was a very, very good player. He was so concentrating on the high hand that he thought he was gonna get. Uh, and then when I showed the nuts, I think he was just discouraged that he didn't win. And he didn't even think about it. And probably every single one of uh, you guys out there watching who have played PLO had made a mistake like this. So anyhow, I had no idea that I was going to be up here tonight. I don't know if Rob knew he was going to be up here tonight. But it, it was really, really fun that we got, we actually sat next to each other. So we got to discuss hands and, and other players. <laughs> all sorts of good stuff. and the bad luck. <laughs> all that kind of stuff. So it was really fun. You'll see more of Omaha on my vlog because I'm enjoying playing that. I know you're enjoying playing it too, it, so it is a lot it's, of fun. it's good stuff. And honestly, it's great to have players like Rob that I can talk to because he is very, very good, and we're both learning a little bit at, on the Omaha. At the two-card game. <laughs> at the two-card game. But it's, it's really, I mean, 
as you guys know from previous parts, Rob and I were study partners for a while, but it just didn't work out because of logistics. But we still talk about poker quite often, and he's a huge help to me. So um, it was fun. I enjoyed doing that tonight. So that was my little foray into Omaha this week. It turned out pretty good. I won, um, I don't know, what did I win? I don't know, won a couple hundred dollars. Thankfully for that one hand, I'd have been even or maybe down a little bit. And I have to say, it was absolutely one of the most enjoyable sessions that I have ever had. And mostly because I sat next to my buddy Rob, we discussed hands, we yucked it up, we had a good time. Rob texted me the next day and just said, hey, thanks for a great time. And I say exactly the same thing. Uh, sometimes poker can be a little bit too serious and uh, grumpy guys. We don't want grumpy guys. So it can be competitive and still be fun. And this was really, really a fun night. All right, guys, you know what? Deceit is a part of poker, right? You have to be able to bluff. You have to be able to represent hands that you don't really have. That's just part of the game. But... Deceit should not be part of a poker vlog. So, I'm now gonna tell the truth about the ace-king hand from last week. See, I didn't want you guys to get caught up on results. So I thought I would tell you that I won the hand, even though I didn't, because I didn't want you to think about results. I wanted you to think about, hey, was the decision okay? Because the results are irrelevant. Anyhow, I didn't flop a king. I didn't flop an ace. <laughs> it was all low cards. I ended up losing that hand. That's why I went and took a break. That's why I ended up leaving. <laughs> I wish I'd have stayed because ev evidently after the I left, it was a huge game. But, so I lost the hand. Who cares? So I won the hand. Who cares? It doesn't matter. The point was, did I make a good decision? So, please take that into consideration, guys. Is results don't matter. Decisions do. <laughs> I know I've reminded you guys before, but one more time, World Series of Poker for Mr. Bill and my son Billy, June 7th through the 16th, June 23rd through the 30th, and Billy in the main event in July. All right, guys, I think it's gonna be next week. I'm gonna have a really kind of special uh, vlog about motivation. I think it's gonna be next week, we'll see. So hang on for that. I wanna thank you guys so much for subscribing and pressing buttons and sending me nice comments. I get so much support. For example, this past week, there was just a guy who was just trolling me about the Ace King, and I got a lot of support from you guys saying, hey, Mr. Bill's a good guy and all that kind of stuff. So I really, really appreciate the support. Um, as always, I'm going to have a wonderful week. I hope you guys do. Be blessed, and I'll see you guys all next time. Bye.